Well, good afternoon, friends and neighbors. This is Brother Bob. <coughs> Excuse me for my cough. I am the pastor of the First Free Will Baptist Church of DeSoto, Missouri, and I am glad that you have joined in with me this day after our elections. Seems like we are more confused after the election than what we were when we went into the election. And folks, there's a lot of reasons for that. I believe one of the major reasons that our society is so confused right now, so in disarray over so many tipper, uh, uh, issues that are out there is because we're out of touch with our creator God, the living God. Look at here, folks. God has this all knowledge, all wisdom, all understanding, and he alone is the one who can guide us into how we need to think, how we need to react to situations in life. We really <laughs> need the word of God to understand life, life's principles, and how we relate to our creator God who created us in the world that we live in. The best way to, best way to get to know God, folks, is through his book that we call the Bible. Oh, what a precious book this is. And I hope you're you're studying it along with me. So many people, so many people do not study the Bible. They read it, uh, and a lot of people don't even do that, but people read the Bible. You've got to study it. I there are times that when I'm studying God's word, I've got to sit down and just digest a single word sometimes. What does that word mean? How's it being applied in this particular situation that I'm reading it? What were the circumstances of this particular uh, message? It's good to know that we're teaching from the Sermon on the Mount, words of Jesus, his first sermon out of the box into his ministry that he would uh, preach and teach a lot of things along the way. What was the circumstances? Why, why did Jesus choose these particular principles to teach in the Sermon on the Mount? We've been studying this the last uh, few weeks. He started out with talking about who was blessed. He wanted to know who uh, who God would bless and who he would not. It's very opposite to the world. You know, our world lifts up some of the most ungodliest of people. We are entertained by some of the most vulgar of people. I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't let that stuff come into my my house. I can tell you that, folks. I I got a little saying that my wife put up on the. Uh, 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 entrance into our kitchen when I was going to revival one time it says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Those are the words of Joshua that he spoke to the children of Israel. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so I dictate things in my house, not as Bob Tebow wants them to be. I've tried that and it don't work too good with my wife or children or anybody else. But I do dictate things in my life and in my house and in the church, according to what God's word says, we have to line up with it. And so I hope you'll get in with me in the study. We have been talking again about the Beatitudes, who, those who are blessed of God, those who God looks down upon from heaven and views our lives as, and sees this person needs a touch, my touch upon them. It can be, it can be a touch that covers a lot of variety of issues in our life. It started with me, a spiritual touch of salvation in my soul. I understood something. I was never going to be blessed of God as a sinner walking around on the face of the earth doing my own thing and ignoring God in my life. If you want God to bless your life, folks, you better give him your life. Give him your life. And so Jesus went down these Beatitudes. Let me read them to you just real quick. And then we'll get to the ones that we left off with and we'll finish up with uh, today. This is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, this is who Jesus considered to be blessed. People who are poor in spirit. Humble people, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. People who mourn over the evil, uh, not only that's out there in the world, the evil that's in our own lives, Blessed are they, the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Boy, I tell you what, isn't it strange to come out of an election, pre-election last night, we had cities that, that uh, shop owners were boarding them up like there was a hurricane coming through because of the fear of rioting and the uh, destruction. And sure enough, there was rioting and stuff last night. We're going to see this on the streets of America and in the streets of the world, folks, as we go down through it, because we got a lot of people to disturb the peace. He says, blessed are the peace makers. 
for they shall be called the children of God. Now that's where we left off last week. The final two are, are really hard sometimes for us Christians to swallow because Jesus made this statement. He said, in the world, this is Jesus to his disciples. He said, in the world, you shall have tribulation. Now that's not a good thought. Why in the world would I want to follow Jesus if I'm going to have tribulation, if I'm going to have trouble, if I'm going to be persecuted? Well, Jesus followed it up with this statement, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In other words, whatever persecution, whatever the trial is, the victory is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will take us through the valley of the shadow of death. He will get us through this world one way or another. Our God is able. Well, he makes a statement about this trouble that can come from <laughs> being a child of the king. He says in verse 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> now, I want you to stop and think about that for a little bit. We need to study this out. We're going to consider this being blessed for righteousness' sakes. Now, again, let me make a common statement that we need to grasp a hold of and swallow in our mind. In us, as individuals, we have no righteousness. The Bible says our righteousness, the righteousness of human beings, is as filthy rags in the sight of God. If you go to Romans chapter 4, you'll read a great study on righteousness that is taught there. and It's talking about Father Abraham from the Old Testament and, uh, and how righteousness was imputed into him. God took his righteousness and imputed his that righteousness into Abraham. He didn't have none of his own. He was a sinner just like the rest of us. Moses was a sinner like the rest of us. Elijah, David were sinners like the rest of us. We had our righteousness fails us. We need the righteousness of God. And so God imputes that in. He looks at us and he gives us. When I kneel, at the, when I kneel in prayer to God, I never, never come to God and say, Lord, here's your grand grand servant. Here's the, here's the man of God you called and, and the great things I'm doing for you. No, I humble myself under the mighty hand of God. I have sinned and come short of his glory, but I am a righteous person in the eyes of God. And that is because God the Father has imputed the righteousness of his son, Jesus, into my life. Again, that's in Romans chapter four. It's throughout the Bible if you want to read it, but it's, it's there. It's it's, it's when God sees me, he sees the blood of the lamb. He sees my savior. It is my mediator that I have in heaven, Jesus the Christ, who's interceding for me with the heavenly father. Nobody else can do that. Only Christ died on the cross and he is interceding. And so the righteousness of Jesus is in my life. That's what makes me worthy to be in heaven. Now, because of that, the demonic powers that's in the world, and folks, there are demons in the world. There is a Satan, there is a devil. Jesus met him head on. He has demons and they're all over this world, influencing societies, nations, <coughs> leaders in nations, uh, rulers in nations, influencing people on the local level, influencing the entertainment industry, influencing the informational ministry, uh, industry that we have, such as media and things in the world. And there is this hatred of Christianity. Again, Jesus said, if they've hated me, they hated you. Why was Christ crucified? What did he do wrong? Pilate said, his judge, I can find no fault in this man. And yet they crucified. How could the hatred be so strong for somebody who had just a week earlier had come into Jerusalem riding on that coat and the people were laying palms out in front of him, crying Hosanna unto the highest. How in the world did it go from that to be to the Pilate's judgment hall, being whipped, being stripped of his clothing, having a crown of thorns upon his head, spit upon his face, to Calvary where he was crucified? How did that take place? It is the evil that is in this world that despises the good. Did you know Darkness hates light. And by the way, light has no fellowship with darkness either. You ought to read 1 John chapter 1 on that, talking about our God. In him is light, and, and he is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. Our fellowship is with the light. And Jesus comes just like this magnifying light in his sermons, in the life that he lived, showing the evils, the sins that's in man's life, and they get angry about it. And because of that, they attack and they persecute. We Christians are not self-righteous. 
I've had people tell me that over the years, and I, folks, I can rebuke that pretty quick. We don't claim to be better than anybody else. We don't claim we don't claim to be more pure than anybody else. We claim our purity is under the blood of Lamb. I live the best that I can possibly live under my God. I try to improve on that as I grow in in the in the uh, teachings of God's Word and the Spirit of God that's in me that enlightens me and convicts me of my wrong. But my righteousness is the Christ. That's where it comes from. And they hated Jesus. Why does the world hate Jesus today? Why is there such persecution of the Christian church that goes on? Well, it's it's the evil that's in our society. And Jesus said about this. Now, again, the blessing are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Now, if you're persecuted because you're letting your mouth get in the way instead of God speaking as the oracles of God, if you're doing your wicked things, that's one thing. You take it. Somebody somebody comes with a spiritual slap across your face because of your evil and your wrongs. You take it like a man. You, you, uh, you correct it, and you walk down a better path from there on. But if you're being persecuted just because you're a child of the king, because you worship him, because you live for him, because you witness about him and tell others about him, that's, that's a different thing. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then he says this in verse 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Now, that's what happens. They, they, they speak evil. They run them down. I, I, uh, I, I tell you what, I, my heart breaks when I see a preacher fall, especially a well-known evangelist or something like that. And we've had that happen. Uh, again, men of God are not perfect people. It shouldn't happen, but it can happen. But boy, I tell you what, the media grabs this stuff and just blows it up, and here we are. We're being labeled hypocrites and everything else. I'm telling you, folks, there is hypocrisy that is out there. There's no doubt about it. There are those who profess Christ who are not even really Christians that are out there. That, that is there. But folks, there is a lot of things being said about the church of the living God, about men of God, about Christians, just people living for God, that is not right. You will find, we stood... Well, I won't get into it. Okay. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. See, it's not just that they have to uh, say bad things about you. They have to go on the attack. I personally believe in, with all my heart that we're living in a day and age where we're doing the, our society. And this is what socialism uh, and communism really focuses on, folks. They're doing everything they can to remove God from our society to remove this book called the Bible. It's even being removed from our churches, not even using the Bible the way we used to use it years ago. And we're living in this day and age where it's being reviled, bad mouth, it's being persecuted. That's going on. And he said, and they shall say all manner of evil against you. I've been down that road, but I'm gonna tell you something. I let God be my witness. There are, there are stories out there, I mentioned these before, you ought to get Fox's book of Christian martyrs and read it sometime. All oh, the stories down through the centuries of years gone by, centuries ago, of people who were burned at the stake, Christians who were fed to the lions uh, during the Roman Empire, some of the persecution, some of the attack. It's amazing to me that the church of God even survived. In fact, it's a great testimony that the church is alive, that it has functioned, that it has spread across the world because the devil and his demons working through evil people have done everything they can to destroy the work and the ministry of Christ. I've had people say, you know, Brother Bob, I used to hate you. I didn't like you. Uh, I thought you were this. And then they, I come into the world and I bring the peace of God, the love of Christ, and I, I'm sharing the concerns and prayers of comfort and, and uh, stories of salvation and, and people change their mind. Where did, this, where did this evil thought came through? Came from that the church is just a, a bunch of hypocrites. Where did that come from? Well, it come from some people not living right. We, we know that. But the all manner of evil that's being spoken of is influenced by demonic power that's in the world today. Look at here. You live your life to please God. You live your life right, folks, and you will be blessed. You will be persecuted. 
You'll have people turn against you. Sometimes it can even be a family member that will do that. Jesus spoke about that. And sometimes it can be, sometimes it can even be a friend. I, it is amazing. When I got, I gave my heart to the Lord, I, there was a lot of people that had buddies that no longer run with me. You know, years later, many of them got right with the Lord themselves and they're back on board again. Look here, I'm selling the old ship of Zion off into glory one of these days. And I want you to go along with me, partner. We want you to know Jesus as your savior. But I want you to understand the more we come down to the end of the world that we live in, more that we live out in the end of times that we are going through, we're going to find Christian persecution. We're going to find all manner of evil being said about the children of God. But you know what? I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep me against any evil of the day. And I know his eyes are upon me wherever I go, wherever I walk, in my prayers, in my life. And when I've sinned, when I've stumbled, when I fail, he's there with his mercy and grace to pick me back up again. My God will never, ever take his eyes off of me because he loves me. And folks, he loves you too. God bless you today is our prayer.